Hey everyone, Daniel here from The Miniature Men, and it is Friday. Today, we will discuss painting one of the more intricate armies of 40k, the Harlequins. One of my favorite armies, and they've become even more popular in 9th edition. But, many people are scared of this army because of the intricate diamond pattern, so they completely abandon it altogether. First, I'm going to show you guys some of the tools you'll need to paint this diamond pattern. Secondly, I'm going to show you guys how to paint GW quality diamonds without all the headaches of the traditional methods that you've seen before. First up, you're going to need paints. Whatever colors you want to paint your diamond pattern, I'll show you which ones I'm using for mine. Next up, you're going to need the Infantry Jester Stencil from Fallout Hobbies. We're going to use this in a little bit of an unconventional way, but it is essential to get this nice, easy to do diamond pattern. Next up, you're going to want to use an airbrush. And I know a lot of you guys want to click out of the video right now because you may not own an airbrush. But you can honestly buy a cheap $100 airbrush compressor set and do this and a lot of other things. For example, the Skyweaver, the pattern, uh, took about 10 minutes to do. And uh, same thing with this uh, Star Weaver right here. It took about 10 minutes to do the pattern. If I decided to do this with a brush freehand, it'd probably take a couple hours minimum. Next up, you're going to want to use a good brush, something with a nice pointy tip. I use a Windsor & Newton 7 series, size 0, but other brushes will work fine. Next, you're going to want a pair of tweezers. I use these ones with nice pointy tips. Regular tweezers should work, but I'll link these in the description. Lastly, you're going to want to use some black ink. I use Daler and Rowney. I got it for about $5 in my local craft store. It's the perfect consistency for making lines. You don't have to water it down. It's great right out the bottle. Before we even start laying down any paint, we want to make sure that we're putting our patterns in the most efficient areas. Um, some models, this will be more obvious than others. Let's take a look at this one. So the areas I'm thinking about are this nice fat thigh area right here and um, this nice flat piece of chest right here. I won't do this side because there's a bulge and the little buttons for the jacket, so I'm kind of doing a little cross pattern. Okay, we're gonna start off with our base coats. We're using Kalidor Sky with Lothorn Blue over it. But of course, for your guys' models, you can use whatever colors you want to. We're gonna start off with Kalidor Sky and we're gonna do two thin coats. Okay, now we have Kalidor Sky down, we're going to move on to Lothorn Blue, and again, we're going to be doing two thin coats. Now we'll be getting into the stencils. What we'll be using is the Fallout Hobbies Infantry Jester Diamonds. Uh, we're going to use these in a little bit of unconventional way, like I said earlier, but uh, these are perfect for the infantry. The diamonds, I believe, are 2 by one5 millimeter. We're going to start by peeling off the actual stencil itself. I like to grab it by both corners and kind of peel off slowly to ensure we keep all those little tiny diamonds on the actual backing and not in the stencil. You're going to lose some, but this stencil right here we actually don't need. Um, I've tried a million different times to use this on the models, but it's kind of bulky, so I end up usually just throwing them out because I have a bunch of them already. But what we are using the stencil for are all of these tiny, perfectly laser cut diamonds. These are what we need for our model. You're going to grab a diamond with your tweezers and place it on the model. At first this is going to seem difficult to do because the diamonds tend to want to stick to the tweezers, but with time you're going to develop a skill for this. You can use the tweezers to kind of depress down the little diamond to make sure it sticks to the model. Next you're going to go ahead and build your little diamond grid pattern on the model. I like to start by making a little box of four diamonds on the model. It ensures that the spaces in between the diamonds are accurate. You can peel off the diamonds, you can move them around a little bit. Um, you want to make sure that your diamond pattern 
is as accurate as possible and it'll stop you from having to do a lot of touch-ups later. So you want to take your time with this and just move diamond by diamond. And after you get that box pattern down, it moves a lot quicker. For the purpose of time, I'm just going to be showing the diamond pattern on this thigh. But of course, I'll be doing it to the chest area as well as the arm in the same fashion. Okay, and this is what it's going to look like with the diamonds on the model itself. You'll see some overlap onto areas we're not painting, but that's not a problem at all. Okay, next we're going to go into airbrushing our second diamond pattern color. In this case, I'm using Jean Stiller Purple. I usually do a 1 to 2 paint to flow improver ratio for the airbrush, but if you use water or airbrush thinner it's fine, just whatever gets it thin enough to shoot out of an airbrush. We'll go ahead and mix up your mixture. Don't worry, this is a, a throwaway brush. I'm not intentionally destroying a good brush. And then I do a little back flow with my hand to circulate the paint and get any of that flow improver that still might be at the bottom of the pot. As always with airbrushing, make sure to test your paint out on a small area before just spraying it haphazardly on your mini. Now that we're ready to spray on our model, we're going to make sure we do extremely light, multiple thin coats. Uh, you don't want to flood your stencil. If you put on a really thick coat, it's going to seep under the stencil and your cleanup is going to be atrocious. So I usually do probably four or five, six really thin coats. You're going to see the stencil the little white parts actually just slowly tint as I spray this model uh, it's going to take you a little bit of time but you don't want to flood the stencil
Once you've achieved a opaque coat with your secondary color, we're going to do probably one of the most satisfying parts of this whole project. We're going to remove the diamonds to reveal the pattern underneath. Grab your tweezers and start pulling off all those little diamonds. Once you've removed all the diamonds, we're ready to move on to line work. Now you need just one drop of this ink, and in fact this probably could do three or four models. This ink is just amazing. Uh, it's super opaque, you only need one line, you won't have to go over it multiple times, you're not going to have to water down black trying to get the perfect consistency. It's great for diamonds, it's great for any kind of line work that you want to do in the future. So what you're going to need to do is grab your brush, and we're going to trace along the diamond lines. Right now I'm doing it with no ink on the brush, but you just want to use the very end of the brush, just the tip, and trace these lines. What we're going to do is now load a little bit of black ink onto the tip of our brush and wipe off any excess. And what you're going to do, like I said, is just glide along those lines. And this is so much easier than normal freehanding because there's already lines on the model. Uh, we put them there with our stencil. Now this portion is a little bit time consuming, but the more time you take to make sure that you're tracing those lines nice and accurately, the less cleanup you're going to have to do later. You'll see that I make a couple little mistakes. Sometimes my lines are a little wide, sometimes they're a little narrow, but there is a cleanup phase that we're going to do right after we do all of our line work. And now we have all the lines on the model. It looks pretty good, but there's some little areas that we do need to touch up. And we're going to do that next in the touch up phase. You can see right here that the line is a little bit thick. All we're going to do is go back to our base colors, which in this case is going to be Gene Stiller Purple and Lothar and Blue. And we're just going to put a little bit on the brush and just clean up these lines just to make them a little bit more uniform. Like I said, we're just going over these areas again with our two base colors and we're just thinning out any lines that may be too thick. Um, you can also take your ink and kind of touch up any lines that you may have accidentally gone over with these colors. You're just kind of cleaning everything up. Thank you. 
At this stage, your diamonds are all cleaned up and they look great, but there's one last step that really makes them pop, and that's adding highlights. For the highlights, we're just taking our two base colors, which in this case is Jean Steeler Purple and Lawthorn Blue. We're adding a little bit of white to each one of these colors to make a little bit of a lighter shade. And we're simply taking our brush, putting a little bit on the tip, and we're making a chevron or a little V shape at the top of every single one of the diamonds. Um, this might seem like a tedious task, but honestly, whenever it's done, it really makes the pattern kind of pop out. Again, if you make any little mistakes while doing the highlights, if you kind of make the line too wide or you go over the black line a little bit, don't worry about it. Just keep going on with your highlights and there is a touch up phase for the highlights right after this. After doing what seems like a million touch-ups on this model, what we're going to go ahead and do is just touch up the highlights. What you're going to do is get your base colors again and just go ahead and clean those lines up. Uh, generally they'll just be maybe a little thick so you can just put a little dot on that inside of that chevron and it'll kind of clean them up nicely. There you guys have it, great looking diamonds. Granted, it did take a little bit of time, but there's no method out there that's fast and also produces great looking diamonds. With this method, you'll avoid a lot of the headaches that come with trying to draw this geometric pattern on all these curved surfaces. And here is the model all finished up. This is the first video from this channel, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be putting out new videos every Friday. This is just the first of many. I hope to see you guys around. Thank you for your time.